It's 4 o'clock on the East Coast, 1 in the Pacific, and we are live. Coming to you from Studio Me here in Pittsburgh, PA, this is the Burn Pit Podcast. I am your host, Scott Benjamin Sieverts. To my right, as always, Matty Wack. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? It is Monday. Yeah. Best day of the week. Best day of the week. We're coming to you it's, uh, from Spreely TV, or on Spreely TV. Spreely is your free speech uh, home. It stands for Speak Freely. You can find Spreely TV on Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and you can download the Freedom Hub app and download any of the uh, Spreely apps right on your smart device or smartphone. Right to your phone. It costs you nothing. Uh, Spreely, they have a great, great network there. You can uh, sign up for Spreely Social. You can go to the Spreely Marketplace, a.k.a. America's Cost Club. There's a lot of great products on there um, from coffee. I mean, you, you name it. There's, there's a lot of great uh, stuff on there. So uh, some of those, you see my pillows on there, uh, 1791 brand coffees, a coffee roaster, uh, USA Beef Boxes. You have the Patriot Cigars. You have a lot of good stuff on there. But it is Monday. It's March 4th, and here we are. Scott and Matt, the Burn Pit Podcast. Spirit Your TV. home for right wing extremism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we got a lot of a lot of news stories to cover today, so I'm just going to read off a couple, and then Matt, if you'd like to add any to it or you want to talk about anything else, yeah, go ahead, please. But we have uh, uh, a lot of stories here to get to. All right, uh, from the Washington Times, the Democrats' new boogeyman for 2024 is Christian nationalism. Um, here's a story from the DC Examiner. Say her name, President Biden, Lake and Riley. We'll, we'll break down that story for you, who Lake and Riley is. Uh, here's a, an article from The Guardian. The U.S. is enabling mass slaughter in Gaza. From MSNBC, the political views of these Christian nationalists might surprise you. A new poll from the Public Religion Research Institute finds that a substantial percentage of black and Hispanics are white Christian nationalists. Well, well, blacks and Hispanics are historically very Christian people, right. very Christian groups of people. Um, wh- white nationalists, they say? How about but that? They're not Those white. are the views that they hold. The views they hold. Okay. And do they describe in any detail whatsoever what white nationalism we'll is? We'll get into that story. Okay. That's from All MSNBC. Right. That's, right. uh, that's the mainstream media right there. Uh, SCOTUS unanimously reverses Colorado's court decision to remove Trump from the ballot. That's from The Blaze and Matt. You called that? Of course. A new study finds that most scientists in the United Kingdom uh, and the UK universities believe that sex is binary. That's from the blaze as well. So let's get into it. What do you want to start with here? I'm going to start with the first one. You you want to do it? Well, well, go ahead. I think we should first start with the Lake and Riley story. Okay. And what's been going on uh, throughout the week, actually, when it's come to. And that basically has to do with illegal immigrants raping and killing people. Correct. So, uh, right. say her name, Lake and Riley. This is this is by by the way. This is from the Washington Examiner. Mm. Um, Joe Biden mentioned George Floyd more this week than Ray, Lake and Riley. Lake and Riley was an innocent college student going out for a jog when an illegal immigrant allegedly murdered her in cold blood. Mm. Riley's assailant seemingly entered the country and committed crimes because of Biden's border security and illegal immigration policies. Yet a week after her death, President Joe Biden hasn't shown much interest in her murder. And he also has shown, hasn't shown much sympathy, empathy, or decency. Why? Because he doesn't care about her. Riley was murdered on February 22nd, a week after her murder. Biden rarely mentioned her name. However, he brought up the name George Floyd on social media, notably X, the president of the United States, seemingly hasn't mentioned Riley's name once. The president who campaigned on decency hasn't shown Riley any. It's slimy and it's sleazy and it is Joe Biden. That's... What it says. During the week when the whole country was talking about the unfortunate loss of Riley, Biden made multiple posts on social media touting another piece of radical propagandized left-wing legislation, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. He didn't make he didn't make anything any comment about Riley. He mm-hmm. cannot use or weaponize her name the way he can with Floyd to fracture the country. Mm-hmm. I will continue to call on Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act so we can make police reform the law of the land, Biden posted on his ex account on Saturday. So the Lake and Riley story, and there's been a couple stories like this where we're talking about uh, United States citizens 
uh, innocent United States citizens mm -hmm. being the victim of violent uh, crime against them, including yeah. murder. Here. Yeah. Well, murder happens all the time, even with non-illegals, right? But the, the real point here is that <clears throat> this motherfucker shouldn't even have been in the country to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you a simple question, Scotty Sieverts. If this illegal immigrant was shot in the face when he crossed the border, would he be able to rape and murder anybody? No, he'd be dead, man. Okay, so there's your answer. So I think we can do a pretty good mathematical equation here. Illegal immigrants plus not breathing anymore equals no more murder and rapes from illegal immigrants. Where's the lie, Scotty? No lies detected here. Uh, <laughs> okay. but, I mean... <sighs> We uh, we've promised on this show to offer solutions. Yeah, and and that's the solution. So let me let me say something about Joe Biden here. The, the conservatives and Republicans are making fun of Joe Biden for not bringing up the Riley case. Of course, he's not going to. You're an idiot if you think he's going to. They never do. They never talk about any white Americans being murdered or raped by illegals or, or by any minority groups for that matter. They just won't discuss it. And even if they do discuss it, they never bring up the ethnicity of the individual who killed or raped you know, the uh, uh, white person. That being said, um, I, I don't blame the Democrats for this. I, I blame the Republicans. You're the ones pissed off about it, Republicans, conservatives. What have you done besides bitch and complain? What have the conservatives and Republicans done besides bitch and complain? Uh, sh show me. Are they are they physically stopping illegals from coming in? We can say now that Governor of Texas has now he put up razor wire. Right, right. Is he shooting illegals in the face as they cross? No, that would be okay. You know, what, what do you think the headline would be there? Not if say if I was writing the newspaper. <laughs> no, in general, let's oh, say okay. this: the mainstream media. Yeah. What do you think this headline would be if, for instance, say the governor of Texas told the National Guard or even said he told the citizens yeah, to well, organize. That would be great. Right? If the governor of Texas, yeah. uh, Greg Abbott, came out and said, listen, our commander-in-chief, our leader of this country, does not care about the safety of its citizens. We won't, he, he doesn't want to protect the border uh, against the illegals coming in. So what I'm advising to do is take up arms, utilize the Second Amendment, and if you see an illegal crossing... You should, well, he'd probably be charged if he said you should shoot them. Char it doesn't matter. Who are they going to be? People are going to defend them or not? Yeah. But let's say he came out and said that, and then there was an incident where illegals were coming over and say just random citizens yep, were maybe. just taking upon themselves to shoot them. Let, let's say they had signs up that says, if you cross, you will be shot. They, we'll, cross, yeah, well, yeah, right, they gave I'm, fair. I'm, I'm not cold hearted. Right, you put a sign up and warn them first. You're giving a fair warning. Yes. Say, hey, if you yeah. cross, you're going to be met with violent force. Yeah. What do you think the headline would be if there was an incident where you have a uh, somebody, a citizen mm. that's not deputized, not a sheriff, not a police officer, right. not, not a, uh, a. Right. Uh, I would hope the headlines. Scotty Sieverts would read American patriotic president does the right thing and stops illegal immigration at patriotic governor, adds, governor. Patriotic governor, governor yeah. does the right thing and stops illegal immigrants by the only known method to 100% guarantee to be effective. The, correct. <laughs> that's what <laughs> the headline. What? That's what the headline. What? Violence. The use of force. Violence is golden. Violence. Uh, if anybody hasn't read that. Uh, Again, read that. where is, Am I wrong? Uh, play devil's advocate. Let's go. Is anything I said factually incorrect? Illegal no. immigrants being shot in the face would or stop, anywhere would stop, would stop them. them from breaking the law in our country. Where, where's the lie? Well, I'll play two sides here. Number okay. one is when you make an example out of somebody yes. like that in yeah. a, a physical type yes. of violent way, it deters other people That's from wanting correct. to do it. Right? That's correct. But on the flip side of that, mm. people... The mainstream media will say that Ooh. it's not, one, it's not humane. It may mm. be illegal to right. just kill people trying right. to cross the border. I don't care what they say. Right. That's, what that's, that's the problem. People care right. what they're ca calling bad names, right? Well, uh, Scares people away. A devil's advocate, do you think it would be wrong to just randomly shoot? There would uh, be no random. It's right. just, here, there's the border. You right. cross, you get shot. Right. Aren't we better than that, Matt? Aren't we better than I, that as a country? I don't know how to get that's any better than that. That's I mean, the best I, you can get. I can hear that's what the best. my liberal friends. That's are how one's, to one's, this. one achieves greatness. You're an Scotty. Extremist. You're, yeah. One achieves greatness by protecting one's family, one's people, one's nation, mm -hmm. and uh, in that aspect, our entire culture and way of life is protected now because citizens aren't getting raped and murdered anymore. 
Where's the lie? Well, there is a duty there from the yeah, president correct. to protect the citizens. Well, from anybody. Anybody right. in government, not just the president. The president fails or falls amongst the states. The state fails am- falls amongst the, the counties or whatever. The people. We the people, right? Isn't that what it's supposed to be? Right. But no one knows what that phrase is anymore. We the people. It's a meaningless phrase. If, if Governor Greg Abbott called for uh, citizens to arm up and to protect the southern border, there would be some sort of legal backlash there. There would be... Okay, and then what comes from that backlash? They're going to have to do one of two things. The president can then send the National Guard in to go stop the governor, which means the National Guardsmen who are made up of individuals who are military, who swore an oath, who swore an oath, they're going to make a choice. Do I wish to protect the border or attack the guy who is protecting the border? Okay, you are now, you have to pick a, pick a side. You're either on the side of the enemy, the domestic enemy, or you're on the side of America. And every citizen has to do the same thing. Unfortunately, the citizens are so emasculated and weak and subservient, they depend on the government, on every aspect of the government, local, county, state, and federal, to protect them. Because they are so weak and emasculated, they don't want to protect themselves. They would have no problem shooting a little immigrant coming into their home, right. their house. Right. But when they come into their homeland, oh, well, that's the government's job. I, I, can't, I can't protect. Sorry if you get raped and murdered. I, I, I don't want to be called a bad name by the media. And I don't want to, you know, because I, I know that the, the, the police, the law enforcement, are going to side with the people who pay them their you know, paychecks and benefits and, and pension. Their shekels, so. Because, right. So the police are now the bad guys, effectively, because they're not doing anything. So every government organization, even even Abbott's just putting razor wire up. Ooh, here's some razor wire. Okay, well, I'm just going to slide underneath, go over top, put the cardboard underneath, slide underneath. If you don't physically stop somebody by force, by ending their breathing capabilities, they're still capable of coming across and raping and murdering. Why don't we tell the parents of this kid, you know, this, this raped and murdered child, which is one of many, by the way. Right. One of many, why don't, why don't you tell them, say, hey, we got to wait for the president to do something. You're not allowed to do anything. Sorry. Well, the more and more stuff like this happens, yes. the more outrage there will be for a solution to the southern border, which has now been going on for how long? Five decades, maybe? Oh, I mean, what- yeah, it gets worse every time, right? President Trump was worse than Obama. Worse was, uh, Obama was worse than, than uh, uh, Bush, mm-hmm. and so on. So, and, and even Ronald Reagan, as we clearly stated Six last million, time. was it? Or three uh, million? I, Oh, I don't know how many. Right. I thought it was 600,000. Oh, six. Okay. Well, hold on. And I was corrected by somebody after I said that. And it was like in the millions or yeah. a little over that 1 is, million. Yeah. He gave amnesty to. Yeah. So and there it is. There it is. All right. You ready yeah. to move on to the next one? Let's story? go. <laughs> All right. I love. <laughs> let me tell you folks out there the enthusiasm that we have for this show, the passion and the joy that we have for this. Yes. And also, may I mention, I forgot in the uh, intro. You know, when we uh, come on and we do the intro in Spreely TV, yeah. and name the names, we have to start including Peter J.S. Regan in this. Uh, well, I don't think he wants to be. <laughs> Peter J.S. Regan, the producer of our show, shout out to him. He does a great job. He's always uh, putting up with our, our uh, yeah. craziness. God but I will him. say this. God bless him. He's I always, hope, I he's always F- sitting in the pilot Do you think the chair. FBI has contacted Spreely yet? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, the guys that are on there already. Listen, as, as we may agree or disagree with some hosts on that show mm-hmm. or that network, I, but we love them because they're part of the network and we love Spreely TV. Dominic Izzo, Austin Peterson, those guys too, as though they may not be labeled as extreme as we are. Yeah, I mean, they they hold some views too that would get them into some hot water. So, and I mean, they've been banned in other places. You know, yeah, been, yeah. So. I mean, it doesn't take much these days to be labeled an extremist. It doesn't take much. Yeah, but, yeah. but that's uh, what the Democrats' new boogeyman is for the 2024 election, and that is Christian nationalism. Okay. This story is coming to you from the Washington Times. Go ahead. That, the, that's a conservative uh, publication, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Very conservative publication. In the wake of the killing of George Floyd, Americans were treated to a near-constant refrain from Democrats about widespread indiscriminate killings of black men by white police officers. The facts did not support those charges. Regardless, those claims were addressed by, by a message about the a precipitous rise in white supremacy being a threat to our country rivaled only by climate change. That's number one. But that, too, is also manufactured outrage. Those messages were core to the Democrats' effort to mobilize voters against Republicans in 2020. 
Well, it's an election year, so naturally a new boogeyman needs to be concocted by the left to scare the Americans. This year, Democrats and their massive media ecosystem are raising alarm bells about the danger of so-called Christian nationalism. Dozens of articles have started popping up about the fictional political movement that is Democrats' thinly veiled attack on Christianity, the Bible, and America itself. One of the most recent promoters of this conspiracy theory, backed by no practical evidence, is Politico and its reporter, Heidi Brazibula. I apologize. What's her name? Right here, buddy. You see this? <clears throat> no, I want you That's to uh, spell that for me real quick. Hold sure. On. Hold on let's one let's do it. Heidi's H I. Hold on. H I I D I. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Well, My phone's acting. Okay, okay, I'll I'll keep reading this one. Okay, but uh, a review of Heidi's reports findings not surprising. An almost singular focus on attacking conservatives and Republicans, making her yet another activist masquerading as a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. She boasts on her website that her detailed reporting on President Biden's record on abortion, pressured by pressured the Biden campaign in 2020 to reverse its longstanding opposition to taxpayer funding for the killing of the unborn. Her articles are almost devoid of any policy or political criticisms on the left, even though she... Okay, so which, how do you spell her last name? Her last name is capital P. P as in Paul? Yep. R-Z-Y-B-Y-L-A. P-R-A-Z. Mm-hmm. No, P-R-Z-Y. Oh, wow. P-R-Z-Y. Who has two... So, um, consonants in a row. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> okay, <laughs> PR, Zib, That's, okay, I got it right here. All right. Anyways, but uh, so the biggest threat here coming uh, that the Democrats, uh, at least the Washington Times think, that the biggest threat to democracy, according to the Democrats, are, is Christian nationalism. Um Matt, what's your religious affiliation? Well, Do you well, have a religious? well, hold on. Before I go into this, yeah, um, let's look at the founding of the country and the founding fathers. Okay, all of them, by the way, all of them, to my knowledge, all the the main ones. Uh, you know, there were some uh, deists. Madison, the, well, a right. deist is still a Christian. So they just believes, don't the church. Right. I don't believe in organized church facility, but I believe in Christ. I'm a Christian. Thomas Jefferson is a perfect example. Of that Benjamin Franklin as well. Um, they believed in God. They said many uh, quotes uh, about God. They believed in God. They mentioned him all the time. The only atheist was um, Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine wrote Common Sense. He was the only known atheist. He's that being said, stuff. they wanted to create the nation of America. They believed in America. Uh, they were nationalists, right? They even said stuff about not entangling in foreign wars, foreign finance, foreign debts, right? Because they were in debt to France during the day. They said no more foreign entanglements. They literally were Christian nationalists, the founding fathers. If you were to define Christian nationalism the way they are, the founding fathers were Christian nationalists. Okay, go ahead. Well, let me take a time to plug the Spreely yeah. Network. Go ahead. You're watching us on Spreely TV. Spreely is your home for free speech. It stands for Speak Freely. Spreely. Uh, you can download Spreely on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire Stick. You can also download the Freedom Hub app right to your phone or smart device. There's a lot of great shows on there. Spreely Social, you can sign up for by going to Spreely.com and just clicking on Spreely Social. The Spreely Marketplace, a.k.a. America's Cost Club, has a lot of great products of the, uh, on there. A lot of, uh, you can go on there and get your shopping done. Uh, you have USA Beef Boxes, freeze-dried beef. You have 1791 brand coffees, roasted coffees. You got the Patriot Cigars. Uh, My Pillows on there. You have... Uh, Century H2O, water filtration systems, the wellness company, healthcare products. You have uh, a cup of health, healthy coffee alternative. You have jerky treats on there, big jerk. There's a lot of products on there. There's a lot of good stuff on there. And it's uh, they're all American made and uh, helping support. The cigars sound pretty good, bro. Cigars sound good. Yeah. Yeah, we're big cigar fans here. Um, so here we go. The, yeah. So this, this is, uh, to piggyback on that article, we're going to go to this article from MSNBC. And the, uh, uh, again, that person was saying that the Democrats are going to use the, new, the Christian nationalism as the new boogeyman for this election cycle. Yeah. 
and hear from MSNBC right on cue, the political views of these Christian nationalists might surprise you. A new poll from the Public Religion Research Institute finds that a substantial percentage of black and Hispanic Americans hold white Christian nationalist views. Based on a survey of 22,000 adults from across the country, new polling from the Public Religion Research Institute on Christian nationalism confirms that Christian nationalism is strongly linked to voting for Republicans, higher church attendance, and white evangelical Protestant affiliation. But it's not just for whites. Polls find that a substantial percentage of black and Hispanic Americans are Christian nationalists. It also finds that black people who identify as Christian nationalists diverge politically from their white and Hispanic counterparts, meaning they mostly vote Democrat, uh, African Americans, even but, but even they though identify as Christian they nationals. hold the, those views. Okay. So, <clears throat> Christian nationalism is a political ideology and cultural framework that seeks to merge American and Christian identities, distorting both the Christian faith and American constitutional democracy. <laughs> What do you got for me already? I'll, I'll read after this, but what are you thinking so far? Well, give me, give me, uh, let me stop. Mind. I got to stop, like stop you. I got to stop you. I got to stop you right Please there. Please go. Okay. So read that last sentence again. Okay. All right. Christian. Oh, I'll just read that part again. Um, Christian nationalism mm. is a political ideology mm. and cultural uh, framework that seeks to merge American and Christian identities, distorting both that uh, both the Christian faith and America's constitutional democracy. Many, stop. Stop. Go ahead. Okay, it distorts the Christian faith. Uh, distorting both Christian faith and America's constitutional democracy. Okay, how, it doesn't. Okay, so right now, let me just say it. First of all, it doesn't say how it distorts the Christian faith, but maybe it gets into it. However, it's a fucking republic, not a democracy. So right there, the person who wrote this is an uneducated fucking buffoon. They're a fucking retard. Okay. <laughs> Or they're a liar because it's not true, well, right? Most, most we're in, hold on, a, think we're in a democracy. Well, most because people. they're retarded or they're lying, right? There's no other option because we're not a republic, representative republic. We're not a democracy. It's a republic. Put Jesus to the flag for the United States of America. For the republic. To the republic, the republic for which it stands. stands. Not the democracy. Nation, which under God. Doesn't matter. They want so to get that out of there. My probably. point is they're either lying or they're a retard. I can forgive a retard. I cannot forgive a liar. So I might be able to forgive this person. So... Please continue. I had to make a correction there with a fact and a lie or a distortion of the truth from a retard. So go ahead. Does it describe how it distorts Christian faith? I and just stop me as you want yes. to comment. Yep. All right. Many, but certainly not all, people who espouse Christian nationalist beliefs often believe that America was founded as a Christian nation. Okay, stop. <laughs> I just said that every single one of the founding fathers were Christian. Most, yes. Right. Now, they said you can be whatever religion you want, but they based everything off of, you can re you read their own writings. They based everything off of, like, the Ten Commandments, well, right? Which a lot of people do. Thou shall not kill. It's like, a lot of these things were in law. They, they, they were all Christians. Well, we've said this quote many times, and I think it's important to... Yeah. I, I like to repeat things over right. and over again because that's how you get people to learn. Yes. When you're a teacher in a classroom, like I once was, I was an instructor as a primary mar marksmanship instructor here. I repeat something over and over again so that people get it. Yes. That's also a strategy implemented by Marxists. <laughs> you right. repeat something over and over again. Right. And Thomas Sowell even said that people have now accepted verbal repetition as a substitute for evidence. If you say something, remember the whole, um, you ever see the meme, it's from Joseph Goebbels, right? It was his Nuremberg speech, I forget what year, and you always see the meme. You repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. The Goebbels <laughs> admitted it. If you, re if you listen to the whole speech, he's literally talking about the United States propaganda machine, how they lie, and they lie so much, it becomes the truth. Right. Thomas Sowell says this again, how if you repeat a lie so often enough, or repeat anything, it becomes a substitute for evidence because people don't research it. They hear it enough. Hollywood movies, right. Netflix series, you know, a, a History Channel special, mainstream media narratives, government run a public education education system here here's this 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 yes you know uh, we we've said this on multiple different topics before but to your point you 
you re- repeat the truth enough, people will remember it, or a, a, a way to do something. This right. is what you need to do, right? right? In a marksmanship, you got to yeah. do this, right? You over and over again, you repeat the same right. thing. But over it's over used again. by Marxists to... It sticks in the brain. Correct. As Goebbels right. said, you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth right. in their minds. So the one quote that I'm going to repeat that we've repeated multiple times, and we're going to continue to repeat multiple yeah. times on the show, is John Adams did have that quote where he said, the only way that this country is going to work is, is for a moral and religious people. And that's that's it. That was Correct. the baseline of right. the country. Because the Constitution's the not a suicide pact. Right. Hey, everybody. Yeah, do whatever the hell you want. You know, hey, pedophilia technically is constitutional because it doesn't say that five-year-olds can't have uh, freedom of association. Uh, so they can bang a 40-year-old if it's consensual. Um, same thing with guns. Hey, you know, hey, uh, a five-year-old has a right to keep and bear arms. They're allowed to go buy a machine gun or any gun or whatever, right? Well, no one's going to say and get their uh, a five-year-old a gun. But right. technically speaking, it is constitutional. So... If you have demoralization, degradation, depravity, degenerate, degenerative behavior, immorality, if you say, oh, it's all constitutional, you can promote communism and Marxism while your country's finished. So it's not a suicide pact. Hey, if shit's going wrong, you know, use that Second Amendment to fix up, fix business. Right. So to your point, it only works with the moral and religious people or your country self-destructs, which is where we're at right now. Go ahead, continue. All right, so uh, I'll, I'll start again by reading that first part. Many, but certainly not all, people who espouse Christian national, uh, nationalist beliefs often believe that America was founded as a Christian nation. That is, <clears throat> that it is a providential nation in history, and most important, that Christianity should have a prominent, if not preeminent, place in American life. Christian nationalism, in many ways, is... In, uh, is a basically the state of religion in the United States of America. Um, so the poll breaks down the intensity of Christian nationalist beliefs by defining those with such leanings as either a sympathizer or adherent. The poll finds that roughly three in 10 white Americans, uh, 20% are sympathizers, 10% are adherents, roughly three in 10 black Americans, 21% sympathizers, 12 adherents, roughly three in 10 Hispanics, 20% sympathizers, nine uh, adherents, uh, and roughly three in ten uh, multiracial Americans, they qualify as Christian nationalists. Okay, uh, you want to keep going? Well, keep uh, well, uh, well, well. What's the, the, my point? Is what's I don't understand the problem with it. Where, where's the danger? What, why is this? Why, why, why is this dangerous? And and, and why, why is it going to? I can get to the why they think go it's ahead. Dangerous. Yeah, because let's. Right. So, uh, the author of this. Uh, Start here. What does this all mean, uh, not only for how Christian nationalism is described and defined, but also for the 2024 election cycle? I spoke with Robert P. Jones, who recently wrote the book, The Hidden Roots of White Supremacy. And he said, I made the case that Christian nationalism is a new term for the current incarnation of an old conflict between two conceptions of our nation, an image of America as God-ordained promised land for European Christian uh, whites and an image of America as a uh, pluralistic democracy. We've never fully resolved these tensions, and this new survey shows how these mutual incompatible visions continue to divide the country. I I can keep going. There's way more to the story here, but what do you think uh, about that? You think, uh, well, it's, it's, is, they still haven't proved it. They just give, they're giving their opinion on what is happening. The, the, they're divide the country. How is Christian nationalism dividing the country when you have all different races basically adhering to Christian nationalism, as it's saying? Besides Asians and Jewish people, they, they haven't mentioned that. Well, if they, if they say it leads to white supremacy, number one, what the hell is white supremacy? And what are whites supreme in right now? I'd like to know. Do, do whites make up 80% of the current administration's cabinet? Or does another group of people make it up? Do whites own um, 95% of the media or does another group own 95% of the media? Do whites own uh, uh, Comcast, Netflix, the History Channel, Discovery Channel, Disney? No, other people make up that and own that. Do do uh, whites own the banking institutions or another group are, are supreme in the banking institutions? Okay, the... the um, Tell me what whites are, where the supremacy of whites are. I'd like to know where the supremacy of whites are are, are reigning over. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm okay. going to do some things. Yeah. Uh, well, so when uh, 
you look at the the founding, they'll say, you know, throughout the years that uh, white the the country was founded on uh, the the white Christian ideology, and then it, and that they built the country off the backs of slaves or immigrants or whatever the case may be. So there's been a, a history of racial injustice in the country stemming from yeah. white supremacy, right? Yeah. Uh, so that would be the first thing. And, and people will argue that the state of uh, affairs, and you can give statistics about how uh, African Americans are doing in society, how Hispanics are doing in society, things like that. But in every measure, statistical measure, actually Asian Americans are doing better, actually. In every statistical measure that you would say that's an example of white supremacy, Asian... So Asian, there's more Asian supremacy and, than white supremacy. And Indian, too. Like, there's... Okay. A, there's yeah. a per, they make more money per capita per household. Uh, you know, the education, they... they, they so I mean, in they, that aspect, yeah, but, Asian but, and Indian supremacy reigns more than white supremacy does. Right. But okay. the people say that you can't punch from... Uh, down you can't from a punch from a position of power so people punch up so uh, again this argument's been made that because of social injustice that's a reason for the african-american community or the hispanic communities not doing as well say educationally and, and test taking um uh, you know, that, that wasn't true pre. That wasn't true pre uh, Great Society. That wasn't true pre uh, Welfare State. That wasn't uh, true pre Civil Rights Movement. Right. No, you're right. That's absolutely right. But people don't will ignore those facts. People will ignore those facts. Okay. So then. Right. Right. So, in my opinion, well, um, accountability. And I am lost. not a Christian nationalist. However, I could definitely see that better than a um, you know. Uh, let's look at an atheist nationalist state or an atheist uh, internationalist state no the communist no soviet communist soviet union there's no mention of god how'd that go down not well okay so i definitely choose christian well, national they did it wrong they did it wrong <laughs> they did it wrong yeah they didn't do it they right do that. they didn't do it right that's why yeah. socialism uh, when we give examples of uh, socialism or communism they go well it wasn't implemented the right way yeah okay yeah uh, all right so we'll continue on with this article real quick and, and then we'll try and move on to some other okay. stuff okay uh but uh, for white people and Hispanic people who embrace Christian nationalism, their ideas line up with the belief that God has ordained America as a promised land. It's uh, a belief predicated on a mythical history that has been constructed about America and on a nostalgia for a time when white men led the country and, and women and people and other ethnic groups knew their place. That belief dovetails with what I call in my recent book, White Evangelical Racism, the politics of morality in America, the promise of whiteness, that is, the ability to attain and perceive uh, benefits of being white and conservative in America. By contrast, black people <coughs> in America believe that their Christian nationalism is predicated on the prophetic and practical demands for democracy to be extended to them in America. Uh, this is why for black Americans fighting for freedom during slavery and during Jim Crow via the civil rights movement was rooted in a different religious uh, ideal, a prophetic call for justice. It, uh, this is a, a long article, and actually, to be honest... Uh, it's nauseating, it's, Scotty it's, Siebert. Well, it details, who wrote this again, that Heidi? This MSNBC, no, this is a different... Uh, well, who wrote this? Show me their name. And Thea Butler, MSNBC columnist. What a, what a, she should drink a glass of arsenic and see what happens. <laughs> That's what she should do. Well, are Christian nationalists a threat to this country? They're a threat to Zog. Okay. They're a threat to Zog. Again, they're, they're a repeat threat. things. What is Zog? Zionist occupied government. What's Zionism? Jewish nationalism. Okay. Oh, imagine that. Jewish, That's okay. Jewish supremacy. That's okay. Israel can have a Jewish That's national state. That, I'm going to push back on you. Christian that, nationalism that is, no good. Again, when you talk about uh, Jews, yeah, they'll say that's another persecuted group. That, <laughs> I, I, well, Matt, again, will you look at yeah. African Americans being slaves and having the, the black cloud that hangs They were white the slaves, country. Irish slaves. There were t definitely a lot of white slaves. You're so. not wrong. No. You're not wrong. No. But they'll just say also to the, the, all the... Uh, different things that happened um, mm. during uh, post Civil War, where you had, you know, black drinking fountains, black uh, restaurants, black yeah. restaurants, yeah. and there was, you know. But isn't that capitalism? It's my business. I can do what I want. Well, you, so technically, you're an anti-capitalist if you're against that, right? Well, are, so ah, hold you're, on. <laughs> you're against. You're you're against. 
some of those uh, laws that right. were made in the civil rights movement. Right. So, right. So bake the cake, bake the gay wedding cake. Well, that's a, or we'll uh, find you and shut you down. That's another great discussion to have. That's another great discussion to have. Is is should you be like should you be forced to serve? Uh, we can't. Uh, or do, you, these laws that were made, you can't discriminate on sex, age, religion, color. Blah, but blah, you blah. can discriminate against. You can. Okay. Well, let me walk into a Jewish bakery and ask for swastika cookies and tell me what happens. Well, again, they're going to discriminate they, against me. They tell you no, obviously. Well, my point is they do discriminate. <laughs> so again, <laughs> it's it's a completely it's it's I um it's an oxymoron. It's for whatever they want. It's whatever they want to do. So you know a pendulum? Yeah. Right? And it swings. Yeah. Some sometimes it's uh, starting to overcorrection sometimes where like let let's just say yeah. you would agree that in the South and the Jim Crow laws that some African Americans were mistreated. One hundred percent. There's no denying that. One hundred percent. Right. Italians were mistreated in, in New York, so were Irish. But so you have the pendulum swing where things are not great. Yeah. And the pendulum swings yeah. back too far, maybe too far, where now we get the no, hey, so bake so this so cake, no, so or so you're so a bigot. You know. Yeah. So it went from yeah homosexuals not being feeling comfortable being out yeah to well please just let us get married to now bake that cake and let us read your uh children in drag let, yeah. let's it, like there's an overcorrection there where it's like all right well you know homosexuals let's just <clears throat> let them have whatever, whatever yeah. let's be accepting of that yeah. to the point now where it's gone too far now that pendulum probably is going to swing back at some point you see that? I think it's correction. starting to swing back because you see more people being open about uh, the reality of the situation of what's going on in our culture and who's behind it. I think we see that now more than ever, as we know. Well, we talked um, about this last week with Mark Adams on the show that uh, Candace Owens. Right. So out of nowhere, well, she seemed to again, talk about something that right. is a taboo so th to talk about. Well, because it's been hidden. It's been hidden on purpose. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to... Um, you're familiar with Yuri Bezmenev. Has anybody watching this show have ever listened to the Yuri Bezmenev interview with uh, uh, G. Edward Griffin? And it was in 1980 or 1981. It was, he talks about ideological logical subversion, how the communists have been completely subverting the United States. And I think I have it saved here, so I'm going to read it. Um, he talks about how True information is completely irrelevant anymore because people have been brainwashed for so long. So what I'm going to do is, and this is just a minute, a minute or two. He said, ideological subversion is the slow process, which we call either ideological subversion or active measures. That's what is known as a KGB. It's, it's also known as psychological warfare. Now, it means to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite the abundance of information, no one is able to come to a sensible conclusion in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing process which goes very slow and divided into four basic stages. Now, I'm going to talk about the first stage here. And the first stage is called, and this is the most important one, it's called, what we talk about all the time, Scotty Sieverts, demoralization. It takes about 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that long? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to educate one generation of students in the country of your enemy exposed to the ideal ideology of your enemy. Which means the communists, they're, 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 we're exposing you to the ideology of our communism, our Marxism. Now this, yeah, go ahead. To do that? Sorry. All right. You're watching us on Spreely TV. Spreely is your home for free speech. You can find Spreely on Roku, Apple TV. You can find it on Fire Stick. Download the Freedom Hub app. And uh, I, I'll tell you what. Spreely is one heck of a place for America First publishers and social media influencers and companies. Uh, you can go to uh, Spreely Social. Just go to Spreely.com. Click on Spreely Social, and you can sign up for that. The Spreely Marketplace, a.k.a. America's Cost Club. I have a lot of great products on there. Uh, 1791 uh, brand coffees. You have USA Beef Boxes, freeze-dried uh, prep beef. You got Patriot Cigars. You got My Pillow. You got Century H2O. You have, uh, there's children's books on there. Uh, the Tuttle Twins, they, they give 
pro-America history stories to your kids and read them uh, bedtime stories. It's great. Anyways, so Spreely TV, we appreciate you. And uh, watch, check us there on Spreely.com and download all those uh, things for Spreely. Anyways, Matt, go ahead. Okay, so he talks about it. The Americans being exposed to the ideology of Marxist Leninist ideology because it's being pumped into at least three generations of students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism. The demoralization process in the United States. Now, remember, he said this in 1980, Scotty Sieverts. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already for the last 25 years. Actually, it's overfulfilled because demoralization now reaches such areas we previously not even where previously not even comrade on drop off. That was the guy in charge of the KGB in in uh, uh, the 60s and 70s, and all of his experts would hope for. It's been such a tremendous success. Now, this is 1980, okay? It's 40 years ago. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans thanks for the thanks to the lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who is demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell him nothing. Even if I shower him with true information, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to a concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he's going to receive a kick in his fat bottom when the military boot crashes his balls. Then he will understand, but not before that. And that is the tragic of the situation. He's talked about this before. We have shown proof. I had James Perloff on. You can read Mark Weber books. You can talk about the entire World War II with David Irving. All of the authentic information does not matter anymore because he has been systematically demoralized through the through entire process of cultural Marxism, which is an ideological subversion. And that is, the, to your point, we've been demoralized. We have this uh, LGBT propaganda community. We have all this bullshit about Christian nationalism, but what, we're a, they keep repeating democracy, democracy. Every fucking cuck out there thinks we're a democracy. That's what they believe. They say it. Everyone says it. It bothers me, too, when you hear people say uh, democracy. I'm like, it's not democracy. Well, that's, they're, they're gone. Yeah. They will pass a lie detector test. They think that's what it is because it... Again, to Jury Besmia's point, here's true authentic information. Here's proof. Here's evidence. They don't care. They've been taught. Cognitive distance. Co exactly right. They do not. They won't even look at it. Most people won't even. I don't even want to look at that. Right. Because what I know my grandfather told me or whoever told me is the truth. Man, the, the, the mainstream media kept on repeating it every day. Again, Goebbels, you repeat the lie enough. Climate change, you name it. Uh, it you it, can name a plethora of topics. It's ingrained. People are so fucked in the head. They're yep. demoralized. Yep. And this is the 1980s that were overfulfilled. Right. I mean, just imagine how worse it is now. This is 40 years really? later. Almost half a second. Exactly right. I'm crazy. So we're pretty much done. As Alan Zabrowski said, it's pretty much over. Go ahead. Ugh. Well... There's no hope. Well, I mean, there's again. It, you you live a life uh, in that warrior aspect. You fight to the death for what's tr what's what's uh, good and moral and righteous. You know, everyone dies. Scotty Sieverts. Somebody. How do you? How does one achieve greatness by obtaining as many shekels as he as he can? No. By by having uh, material possessions in his house. By closing as many deals for his Zog operated company. <laughs> What is greatness? You know what the founders thought greatness was? Sacrificing everything they had to create a country that we ended up fucking up in the, in the long run. Yep. And there's no sense of that anymore. And that's why technically we deserve to be destroyed. You deserve everybody. Technically, if you think about it, and this is a collective thing and people are going to get pissed at me, the more your fucking kids are being raped and murdered, if you do nothing about it, tell me, argue this with me. How do you not deserve it? If you, if you have done nothing about it. Right. They've accepted it. They've, they, and in some cases, I told people to vote for Trump. In, in some cases, they've embraced it. We, in fact, yeah. if you don't mind, I'm going to take a moment just to plug an episode that just went out. There's, <laughs> a, there's a gentleman by the name of Anthony Lasaco who wrote a book called The Analog Parent. It, it looks can be deceiving. Don't judge a book by its cover because in that book, there's a lot of meat in there. And he breaks down 
uh, the boomer generation as having failed this country in a big way. And when you look at when he, when he this this gentleman who the quote you just read, what's his name? Yuri Bezmianov. He's, he's talking about that in 1980. Said it's basically complete. What generation then? would have completed that because that's that's the well the boomer right that's the situation here where you look they're at, the children of the world war ii vets right and what they let in when you look at when was the start of the feminist movement when was the start of you know when you look at woodstock when were well, the civil rights all this stuff yep. that they went through 60s they, they tolerated a lot they let stuff go yeah. in the name of uh acceptance and love and all this intoler intoleration but but it, Again, they let the communists inflate they their did. country. They, they helped them win the war. They 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 allowed them. And what's to eye, do it. what's eye opening? And I would encourage people to look and read what General Patton said about World War II and his take on things. It really is eye opening, and it's an interesting case study for me because I don't understand this. When I presented uh, this some of this information to certain people, you see it uh, this crazy thing that happens to me and as a, a former marine and a guy that wore a uniform i look at general Patton as one of the top 10 generals of all time and um when you put a side by side of his opinions on winston churchill and what happened there um people will come to the aid to stick up for winston churchill over Patton, like winston churchill how you would think about him as a great yeah. leader or a great prime minister whatever you want right. to think about him he's not an american He's not a guy that wore the uniform. Why would you, why would you, if you have the option of picking sides on that conversation, yeah. why wouldn't you want to support a general Patton, a guy who fought, a guy who bled, a guy who lived his life in uniform and, and his views on the country were patriotic, but yet they'll side with the Brit on the head to head matchup there. And I don't understand yeah, that. Why I, so I Peter highly recommend people read David Irving's uh, uh, writings and books and, and speeches on, on Winston Churchill. I mean, he has all the documents the people he interviewed, the, the diaries where people wrote the excerpts. I mean, this dude was a complete drunk slob slobbingly <laughs> disgusting, a degenerate. And I mean, and that's not even my word. Those are people who met him, dealt with him, worked with him. There's there. Look, look, those statements are out there from certain people. Whether you want to take look it. at the information again, well, you refuse to look at it because you have a, an emotional attachment to something, then you're done. You have an emotional attachment to it, then ah, I'm not well, going to believe facts. Uh, okay, uh, whatever. Uh, being uh, uh, taught history, you're taught yeah. about the uh, Allied versus Axis powers and the Allied powers, and, <clears throat> and they're the good guys. And, and in in war, I don't know if you can say there are good guys, but in that instance, people thought we did the right thing. And I understand both points of view now. I look at, I can look at multiple points of view and see why people say what they say or feel uh, how they feel. And, and I, I don't uh, fault them for, for that. But when certain truths come out, you have to acknowledge the truth. You can't bury your head in the sand and go, well, general, I, I mean, let me read this again. Okay. A person who is demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Even if I shower him with true information, with authentic right. proof and with documents and pictures, even if I take him by force, yeah. he will not wake up. I mean, it's, it's, it's over. I'll tell you what, the, the, You're general, the general patent stuff for me was eye opening because I didn't know a lot yeah. of that stuff. And, and when I looked into it, he did say some things there that weren't flattering for yeah. America. And also, Bill O'Reilly wrote a book uh, yeah. called Killing Patton or something. That's I correct. And, and he talks about Patton was an outspoken guy post-World War II. Yeah. And, and there's just some truth there that you go, well, I can't deny that. And if you, <laughs> you do deny it, it's, it's, well, it's on you. But listen, I'm going to flip the script this week. Yeah, go ahead. We do a couple games. We do the word association game. We do the quote game, which you originated. All right? Yeah, I and did. I, I'm going to take it from you today. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, you don't know what I'm going to bring no, to the table. No, So I got some quotes. I'm going to say the quote, and then I'm going to give four options, multiple choice. Who said it? Okay, go ahead. Number one. This is a two-part quote. Birth control is nothing more or less than weeding out the unfit. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Now, who said it? Was it A, Michelle Obama, B, Nancy Reagan, C, Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, <clears throat> Planned Parenthood or D, Hillary Clinton. I'm going to say Margaret Sanger. That is correct. Yeah. C. Yeah. Good job. One for one so far. Yeah. Here we go. I am very pro-choice. I hate the, con the concept of abortion. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I cringe when I listen to people debating the subject, but you still, you still, 
I just believe in choice. Is it A, George Bush, B, Bill Clinton, C, Mitt Romney, or D, Donald Trump? I'm going to have to say, I might be wrong, but I'm going to say Donald Trump. It is D, Donald Trump. Two okay. for two, Matty right. Black. Wow. Yeah. Going good. All right, here's, a, here's another one. Donald Trump is Hitler. <laughs> Here we go. Go ahead. All right. I don't believe that there's anything. I, sh I should preface this quote. Okay. Go ahead. The four options you have here mm -hmm. are people that either ran for president in this election cycle or are still running. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I don't believe there's anything meaningful we can do to reduce trade of ownership of guns. <clears throat> However, if the Republicans and Democrats got together and passed an assault weapons ban, I would sign it. Is it A? I'll say it again. One more time yeah. for the audience. I don't believe that there's anything meaningful you can do to reduce the trade and ownership of guns. However, if Republicans and Democrats in Congress pass an assault weapons ban, I would sign it. Is it A, Nikki Haley, B, Vivek Ramaswamy, C, Ron DeSantis, or D, RFK Jr.? I would have to say RFK Jr. You are correct. Yeah. That is three for three. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why'd you pick him? Well, like because Nick, Nick, as running as a Republican, Nikki Haley would not say that. Ramaswamy, running as a Republican, would not say that. Um, who are the other choices besides RFK? There's one more choice. Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis wouldn't, even though he's a cuck on the second because of the red flag laws in his state that he refuses to do anything about. He would never say that as a Republican. RFK Jr., if I'm not mistaken, running as an independent or a Democrat. Well, he first started as a Democrat. Okay. Um, but now that's the only one that makes sense even if they believed even if the other three believed that yes, they would never they would publicly never say, say it because correct. it would hurt their chances correct uh nikki haley's still in by the way do you, is that I, well, you don't care yeah. why is she what there's in got, for what there's in, a wait, wait, would she in for why is she still in, in for what oh exactly in for what now there there what's she running for I, that's a good question what do you think what honestly what do you think why is she no still like what position a president she's running for the nomination president of what She's running for the Republican nomination. <laughs> President of Zog. She's bigging that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Ready? This is the last one. Yeah. And then I, I am going to end the, the today because we got some time. Okay. Because so, I, I do want to touch on some things. Go ahead. And I got some good stuff. All right. You ready for this? This is from this quote is from a former president. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in his journals, he said this. We tried this out in Meriwether County, Georgia, and at Hyde Park on the basis of adding four or five Jewish families at each place. I would claim that the local population would have no, no objection if there were no more than that. Again, I'll read it again. Go ahead. This former president said this. We tried that out in Meriwether County, Georgia, and at Hyde Park on the basis of adding four or five Jewish families in each place. I claim that the local population would have no objection if there were no more than that. What's my choices? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you would just. I mean, I can do a completion. I can just. <laughs> I, I thought you would just know. I can just give a guess. All right, is it A, Jimmy Carter? Again, he's from Georgia. Mm. All right. Peanut farmer. Is it B, LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson? C, Richard Nixon, who had made some mm -hmm. uh, yeah, horrible yeah, statements yeah, about yeah. Jews. Uh, Jews, right? Or is it D, FDR? Whew, man, but well, FDR and LBJ both are heavy under the influence of, of uh, some J's there, including Bernard Baruch, uh, Harry Dexter White. Um, but um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that um, that would be popular to say any later than the 30s. I mean, if I had to guess, it would be FDR, but Nixon, I knew wasn't happy with him. I can't see. I don't know much about Carter. I'm not going to lie. And who was else? It was Carter. Lyndon B. Johnson. But I would say this. Well, folks, uh, he allowed the listen, U.S. Liberty to get I'll attacked without retaliation. I'll tell you this. Yeah. There's an old uh, method that my teachers and my both my parents are teachers. And uh, we talked about this with Travis Neville a little bit, that there's a gut instinct. You always trust your gut, and you always go with the first thing you put down. You don't change it. Always just go with the first. That's what they say. Uh, you put down something. The, uh, statistically speaking, if you change it, you're going to be wrong. So if it's a guess, if it's a guess, so, so I'll say FDR. You're correct. Four for four. Matty Wack today. FDR wrote that in his journals. Very surprisingly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was my first guess anyway. So, so here we are. 
What year was that? Does my it give you a year? I'm, I, I'm honestly I curious. I didn't write down the year, but is it 33 or is it like 39? I'll tell you what. I will send you the link. Yeah. After the show. Okay. And for those watching, uh, I can post it on a story yeah. or something like okay. that. And we can I'm just curious in a year. Okay. Because I think that matters because I don't think he would say it World War Two <laughs> after World War Two. I can't see him saying 39 that. 39 or 40, can't see him saying that, huh? <sighs> nah. Too much influence. Gotcha. Yeah. But go, I, that's just, I, I'm not saying it's impossible. That's just my guess. I'm just curious. But go ahead. What do you got? What else you got for the well, end? We have the uh, <clears throat> presidential betting odds real quick. Biden is still a heavy favorite for the Democrats. Obama has, as if you look back at our show in the beginning, I would give the statistical betting averages, money coming in on these uh, certain candidates. Gavin Newsom at one point was 17, 18%. Mm. He's dropped now to nine. Michelle Obama's at 14%. Biden's still holding uh, on to him being the Democratic nominee or, mm. or uh, come the DNC when they have their convention and the delegates the delegates put out there who they want to run for their party. Oh. Biden is still the heavy favorite. But his grip on that looks to be slipping. This is where the Haley um, conspiracy theory comes in. There's a theory out there that the Democrats may put up Nikki Haley. I don't know how that works. Do they, they switch? How do you switch parties like that? Or just well, how would that work? It's oh, because it matters. Doesn't matter. No. No, it doesn't. But now it looks like it's over. Trump by right now a heavy favorite. He's up to ninety percent. He was at seventy and low eighties for a long time. Yeah. But he is gonna be the guy. And to end on this story today, not today, but the SCOTUS unanimously. Reverses Colorado's court decision to remove Trump from the ballot. That was today. Oh. A Democrat uh, appointed justices on Colorado Supreme Court ruled four to three in December that former President Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection on January sixth. Mm. The U.S. Supreme Court issued a timely opinion Monday morning today, one day ahead of the Republican primaries in Maine and Colorado, because the Constitution makes Congress uh, rather than the states responsible for enforcing Section 3 against the federal office holders and candidates, we reverse this decision. Are there any other states that took them off the ballot as well? Uh, no, just those. Just Colorado? I think Maine. Maine and Colorado. Maine, yeah. okay. Now, is there going to be a Supreme Court ruling in Maine? I mean, what? I'm sure that's being challenged. Sure. One would think, though, right? Right. Because Maine always goes Republican. No, that's it. Uh, Maine's uh, oh, yes. Maine and Colorado. They they took it off, or they put them back on the ballots. Both of them. Yep. Oh, okay. Maine's always blue. I know that's what I'm saying. And Colorado's always blue too. Mm, no, nah, not not really. I think I went the to, uh, George Bush four, got a Colorado one. I think. I think. The last three election cycles, uh, two Obamas. Well, there's two. That's only two presidents. Two but, Obamas, Hillary, and Biden. So the last four, four votes. Yeah, 08, it definitely 12, turned 16, more left 20. in the in the two thousands, but like nineties, uh, early two thousands, I think it was um, so Midwest. It was it was, would, it was right, red. Think it would be. Right it, there it's definitely Wyoming. gotten more blue. I mean, there's marijuana legalization. Yeah. You know, a bunch of hippies out there. So Matt, yeah, we got to close the no, show. Yeah, up. it was a great show today. Uh, a yeah. little, I'm going to plug a little bit uh, coming up in the in the future here. Um, we have some interesting guests coming your way. Um, we have Craig Wolfley coming this Friday. He's yeah. a former Steeler. He's the, he's a really charitable guy. You are interviewing him separately. I, I interviewed him solo. Okay. And then uh, Robbie and Smikowski, the former sideline reporter of the Pittsburgh Pirates, interviewed uh, Michael McHenry, the yeah. Fort Fort McHenry. He's a uh, and which Fort McHenry? Uh, tell me. Tell you me. don't know. I do. I, I think I do know. But I, I, my, you ever hear the Star Spangled Banner? Yeah, of course. Battle of Fort McHenry. I love it. Battle of Baltimore. That was Fort McHenry. You didn't know that? I did. I mean, I, I need some revisions. Uh, to revive, War of 1812. Or, Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. Francis Scott Key. I do know that. I All need right. to revisit history and keep reading. Yeah, th this podcast has made me read more than I've ever read in my entire life, which has been fantastic. It's never ending. There's just too much information to even, you, you, uh, even awesome. like me, all the books I read, information. I, it's just, just so much. Also, we got uh, in the future, Stu Peters is coming on. Stu Peters. Hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. We'll see. Yeah. Anyways. All yeah. right. You're watching the Burn Pit Podcast. Listen to the Burn Pit Podcast. I'm Scott Sieverts. To my right, Matty Wack. <laughs> Spreely TV. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Listen. Have a great Monday. Stay dangerous. We'll see you next week. Don't stay safe. <laughs>
Thank you for taking the time to watch us. If you like this episode and you'd like to watch another one, click here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.